from the build creator that gave you Icy Wing Thea in Season 1, and Autobama Gemma in Season 2, comes a brand new build so powerful it breaks the game. Welcome to the new meta of Torchlight Infinite. Lethal Flash Carino, Ring of Blades, Desperate Measure, Snapshot. What's up gamers, Lecture here with a brand new build that utilizes a clever use of game mechanics called snapshotting. My first video for Lethal Flash Snapshot will go over how it works and the starting budget setup to reach 2 billion DPS. Be warned, this is a complex build that requires some game knowledge, so if you're looking for a more beginner friendly build, I recommend checking out my Auto Bomber Gemma Guide. The budget to get this build started is also a bit higher at 50 FE, but Lethal Flash Snapshot will quickly outscale Auto Bomber Gemma in damage per investment. If you're ready to continue into the Torchlight University, let's study the build mechanics. Lethal Flash Carino's hero talent, Desperate Measure, consumes all your ammo to give a projectile scale additional damage. The 40% additional damage per ammo consumed is always a separate multiplier, and the default magazine count is 6, so this starts as a 7.5 times multiplier. We can increase our maximum ammo capacity for a larger damage multiplier when full. A magic relic with 59% hero memory effect and 3 Eve of the King Slaying memories gives us a 16 magazine capacity for a staggering 218 times multiplier. This damage multiplier can be snapshot into a single cast of Ring of Blades, which is a persistent projectile skill that continues to circle around you. Quickly tapping Ring of Blades once will consume an entire magazine of ammo to snapshot the Desperate Measure's damage multiplier for the full duration of the skill. The skill's default duration is 5 seconds, but we can increase it further with added skill duration. Ring of Blades sets its projectile quantity to be equal to the channeled stack count, but we don't want to hold down the channeling skill because it will snapshot a lower ammo count multiplier. This means we want to add minimum channeled stacks to increase the starting projectile count from tapping Ring of Blades once. 4 to 5 minimum channeled stacks is preferred for full coverage and optimal hit counts. Projectile speed and skill radius can also be used to increase the amount of hits, but with less return of investment compared to other scalers. Due to Ring of Blades' low effectiveness of added damage, I have decided to use Wilt to scale damage further. This means we'll be using Wilt, Ailment, Dot, and Erosion damage instead of physical, elemental, spell, or projectile damage. Generic damage and increased duration for Wilt, Ailment, and Dots will also be acceptable. Keep in mind that all these sources of damage multipliers are additive with each other, giving you a diminished return as you stack them, unless they are specified to be additional, in which they are always a separate multiplier. The final tech for this build is Wilting Beam. This skill won't do much of its own damage, but will instead reap the wilts applied by Ring of Blades. It normally only reaps when reaching its max stack count of 5 before resetting. Conveniently, we are already adding minimum channeled stacks. With at least 4 minimum channeled stacks, Wilting Beam stays at a 5 stack count and does a 2 second reap every 0.5 seconds. This can be increased further with reaping duration and reaping cooldown reduction. Although I recommend not focusing too much on scaling reap due to the hit cap reducing its effectiveness in the endgame build. Early on when you need that boost for plane watcher bosses, it's a powerful tour that multiplies the starting build damage 7 to 8 times. Now that you understand how the build works, let's go over the character's setup in full detail. The Lethal Flash Carino has different hero traits than the regular Carino and needs to be unlocked for this build. Dart Shot should be selected so you can blink more often. The choice between Evil Ouroboros and Lethal Interval does not matter for this build. Of course Desperate Measure is one of our main components for this snapshot build. The maximum DPS setup for the starter version of the build uses 3 Eve of the Kingslaying memories for a total of plus 6 magazine capacity. Our Magic Relic needs to have 3 open engram slots. Hero Memory Effect will multiply the plus 6 magazine capacity from the Kingslayers. There are two breakpoints for Hero Memory Effect to take note of. The multiplication rounds to the nearest whole number, so plus 42% Hero Memory Effect will round up to plus 9 magazine capacity, and plus 59% Hero Memory Effect will round up to plus 10 magazine capacity. A 59% relic can be quite expensive, so you may want to start with a 42% or above. Eve of the Kingslaying memories can cost 15 to 20 FE apiece, so focus on getting one or two at first while you're getting the rest of the starter gear together. You can drop down to two Kingslayers if you want more speed for mapping with a magic memory with reload speed. 
You can get max mobility scale charges or movement speed as a second stat. I've noticed the snapshot damage sometimes falling off of Ring of Blades while mapping, so the solution here is to use a magic relic with reload speed and recasting it more often. The talent trees are Goddess of Darkness, Psychic, and Warlock. The first major nodes are Plague and Subtle Impact. We will get at least plus 100% blur effect, doubling this damage multiplier. We'll get skill duration to increase the length of our buffs and Ring of Blades. We'll need some extra will chance from our tree to reach 100%. You can come back for the skill radius later after you're done with the other two trees. In the Psychic Tree, Daze is another effect that would be increased with added blur effect. I've tested the 20% ailment damage to actually be a separate multiplier, so it's missing the additional wording here. With plus 100% blur effect, we get 40% additional ailment damage. More with less is the second major node. Blinding is a control effect that would be increased with Daze. We will reserve all of our life to get plus 100% blur effect. In the Warlock Tree, Prelude is another damage multiplier that can be snapshot onto Ring of Blades. Off the Beaten Track gives us more damage from our support skills, as well as lowering our mana reservations. Make sure to pick up our final nodes for Wilt Chance. This extra energy charge is useful for our Curse, Blurry Steps, and Blink. Ailment damage ignores resistance is an important medium talent at the end of the tree. This makes Erosion Penetration useless for us but allows us to focus on other damage scalers. Here's our main skill setup for Ring of Blades. Channel preparation will give us two minimum channeled stacks out of the four or five total that we're going for. Improved corrosion will be needed to cap out our wilt chance at 100%. Wind projectiles, control spell, and shortened duration are our biggest damage multipliers for our support skills. Entangled pain is our only needed curse. Corruption will not be needed because we're ignoring enemy resistance with the Warlock Tree. Blurry Steps is our first mobility skill. Make sure you cast this after Ring of Blade so it doesn't get cancelled. I've found Blurry Steps to be the fastest setup, but there are some alternative options for more defense. Path of Flames can give you more survivability with Guard and Emergency Avoidance. Or Spiral Strike can give you the Harden buff for 25% damage reduction. You might have to pick up more attack speed in the talent tree to make this feel fast enough. Blink is our second mobility skill. Wilting Beam is used for some extra DPS against tougher opponents. Our first aura link has Erosion Enhancement, Energy Fortress, and Elemental Resistance linked to Restrain and Selfishness. Our second aura link uses Seal Conversion to reserve our life. Keep the level of your Precise Swiftness low enough so that you can fit it in your life reserve. Finally, Precise Auto Defense will give us much needed survivability with Frost Shield and Delayed Pain. Magical Source should be kept under level 16 because that's where the sealed mana cost drastically rises. I have put together the best low budget gear to get the most bang for your buck. Most of these pieces cost 1 to 3 FE a piece, with the entire setup costing around 25 FE. This will use up half of your starting budget, with the other half coming from your hero relic and memories. Base wilt damage is our most important number that is multiplied by our other scalers. Throwing on two repeated ends will result in me getting 144 base wilt damage. Putting a Steel Stagnation in the main hand would give me 215 base build damage and is the most preferred setup on a low budget. Memory Dagger should be one of your first mid-budget upgrades. At 60 to 70 FE a piece, they're extremely good value for increasing your damage further. Two of these daggers, one with an elevated base build damage, gives me a total base build damage of 773. The extra wilt chance will free up some of your talent points, and the Explory is very nice for clearing maps. And Infinity with Quick Ritual give us plus 1 to minimum channeled stacks. If you can afford it, you can get a Corroded Belt with an elevated Quick Ritual for a second channeled stack. The final minimum channeled stack comes from Wind Breath Dispersion, preferably with the cooldown recovery speed elevated from a negative to a positive. The second ring can be a chaotic ending that can provide agility blessings, blur effect, or evasion while blur is active. Alternatively, you can use a second wind breath dispersion with the minimum channeled stack elevated to work on the right ring slot. Hecate's Vision is a good way to get additional damage and damage reduction. Twilight Vestment is an energy shield chest that can give you plus one to ring of blades. Chain Behind the Curtain is an easy way to maintain our blur stacks. For the crossroad gloves, the conversion doesn't matter, but is mainly here to inflict pain for the additional erosion damage. An elevated mod can stack up to 5 times for a total of 61% more damage. 
I've crafted some super budget boots for erosion damage, energy shield, and movement speed. You most likely will need some extra fire resistance here to cap your elemental resistances. The low budget setup costs about 75 FE including the gear, relic, and memories. Let's find out how much DPS this gives us. I'm using the 15 magazine capacity setup with 3 Kingslayers and a 59% hero memory effect relic. The optimal rotation would be Entangled Pain Curse followed by one tap of Ring of Blades and then Blurry Steps. Just sitting here without pressing any more buttons gives us about 4.5 million DPS. Now let's try with our secret tech wilting beam and see how much more DPS the reaps gives us. The dummy cap is immediately reached here at 1 billion DPS. My whirling blades will fall off here at 10 seconds and we can continue the test to see how much more DPS we have. Every 10 seconds will be 1 billion DPS from here. 20 seconds here would be 2 billion DPS. And then 30 seconds for 3 billion DPS. And the damage falls off there right at 3, 35 seconds. Using our formula to find the DPS, we have the 1 billion dummy cap times the 35 second duration of the test divided by the 10 seconds we are actually hitting the dummy for, for a total of 3.5 billion DPS. I did include the reaping of the leftover wilt stacks after Ring of Blades fell off at 10 seconds. But our damage does have some ramp up time building up the wilt stacks so we should include the ramp down damage to get a good idea of our consistent DPS. Now let's test how much DPS we have once we upgrade to two memory daggers. Even without the wilting beam we cap the dummy DPS right away. The ring of blades will fall off at 10 seconds. And the residual wilt stacks will remain. Once these stacks have fallen off, I'll tap the dummy with the wilting beam to keep it active. And there you have the dummy DPS dropping below the cap at 45 seconds for a total of 4.5 billion DPS without wilting beam. One final test with the memory daggers and wilting beam. You can see we are hitting the 2.1 billion cap often on these procs and even seeing some of the zero damage pop up. And there you have the damage falling below the cap at 1 minute and 49 seconds for just under 11 billion DPS. Not bad for the mid budget setup with the memory daggers for a total investment of around 215 FE. For pack spirits I'm not using anything too exceptional. Try to use level 6 blue pets if you have them to increase the effects of the outer ring. Pick up the all res if you still need the cap. As well as the mana regen speed. A defense pet can be nice for damage reduction. That's all I have for now. The next video will go over the advanced version of the build that obtains over 20 billion DPS. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified. I'll also be playing this build and answering questions on my live stream, so come hang out. Peace out and happy slaying.